From the heart of downtown Kokomo, I'm April Thatcher for KGov2, and you are watching News Brief. Here are your latest headlines. The U.S. Department of Commerce released a report last week announcing that Kokomo metropolitan area export totals rose significantly in 2014, a development largely attributable to the strengthening of global markets. In a report titled 2014 Metropolitan Area Export Overview, the International Trade Administration revealed that goods exported from Kokomo metropolitan area totaled $2 billion last year, an increase of 16.5% or $282 million from 2013. Last year was the fifth consecutive year of increased exports for the Kokomo metropolitan area, according to the report. The Kokomo Howard County Public Library is adding yet another learning resource for children three to seven to its collection. It's called Launchpad. Let's take a look. Hi, we're here at the downtown branch of the Kokomo Howard County Public Library with Deb Andrews and Tammy Keith. And they're here to tell us today about an exciting new product that will be a, or that is available now. You want to tell us? It's the Launchpad, right? Yes, it's a Playaway Launchpad. It's a um, preloaded uh, tablet for most of ours that we have right now or for ages three to five. Um, it will be available for checkout just like you check out any other material. Very simple, uh, nice touch pad, heavy duty bumpers for that Ooh. age group. These come preloaded with at least 10 apps and um, these launch pads are themed by different subject areas um, like math, science, um, dinosaurs, transportation, and um, there's information on the back about the apps that are included in each launch pad so any parent can look. They're very easy to use. Um, there's also uh, a place where parents can look and see six different kinds of skills that children may have been using while they were using those apps. Uh, math, critical thinking, um, language arts, and it also shows the three most used apps by every child during that session. So these are very popular right now. All of them are checked out currently. <laughs> um, we're very excited about them. We think this is a, an exciting new product, something out of the ordinary that kids will really enjoy and parents will really enjoy as well. Mm -hmm. And this comes after you guys have introduced iPads for adults to use. And what is the difference between the adults having an iPad and these for children? Well, well, the uh, the iPads for adults. I mean, they ha they can get to the internet. They can get to our website. They can get to different things, and they have apps on them as well. But these only have the apps. It's like the kids can't get off and do anything that you're uncomfortable with or anything. They can only get to these apps that are picked selectively for their age group. Okay. So it's totally safe. They yes. they can't get into any <laughs> Very trouble <secure>. on there. <laughs> yeah, okay. And how many of these are available currently? We have 12 titles at the main library, main branch, and we have eight titles available at South Branch. And we hope to add to those um, for next year's collection. And are these something that you can put a hold on as you would another book? Yes. Yes. You can, uh, a patron can check out two of these at a time and they check out for two weeks and they can place a hold of something that they want or they love them and they want a different theme, then they can place a hold on them. And then we only have them at Maine and South, but if somebody at Rucheville or the Bookmobiles want them, they can place a hold on it and it can go to them, to their, to their location. That is really great. And I know technology is a huge learning tool right now, so it's, a really fantastic thing to see that coming to downtown Kokomo with you know readily available for families yes. so thank you very much and is there anything else you'd like to add about this program no we're just very excited to have this new you know kind of cutting edge um, these were just released um, just very recently by play away and we're one of the first libraries around to be carrying them. So we're, we're very thrilled to have them. We're very excited for our patrons to, to be able to check these out. Okay. I was just gonna say, we just put them on the shelves just like 
two weeks ago maybe. They've all been checked out at least once, so some of them more than once. So we're excited that everybody else seems to be excited about them too. Well, learning you know, should be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the library is all about. So come on down to the main branch or the south branch of the Kokomo Howard County Public Library to check out your launch pad. The Howard County Sheriff's Office has recently received inquiries from citizens regarding phone calls purportedly to be from the Sheriff's Department. The caller indicates a warrant has been issued for someone in the household and money for bond or court judgment must be submitted to avoid arrest. The message, which is sometimes left on an answering system, includes a callback number. When the callback number is called, a recording falsely identifies the message as coming from the Howard County Sheriff's Department. No pre-recorded telephone messages are sent from the Howard County Sheriff's Office regarding active criminal warrants. Anyone with information as to the identity of persons responsible for this scam, please call Investigations at 765-456-2031. The annual Wings and Wheels Air Show is this weekend, July 18th. We spoke with Pam Wilde to find out more about this fantastic event. Hi, we're here at Kokomo Municipal's Airport to talk about the upcoming air show with Pam Wilde, who is the event coordinator. So you know what's going on this weekend, right? Uh, mostly, yes. <laughs> Some things people just keep coming in, which is great, but um, it's a nice surprise. <laughs> um, yeah, we have the air show this weekend. This is the seventh year for the air show, and we have lots of big headliners this year. One of them is actually, we're standing right in front of his airplane right now, Nicholas Ivanov, who flies Red Bull. And we've got several other, like Rob Holland, who has been national champion several times and uh, just a lot of pilots that are on their way over to the Oshkosh uh, air show on, starts on Sunday, and so we just get them stopping by here to fly in our air show. Okay. And that's kind of part of the reason why you chose the 18th as the date for the show, so that yeah. it was just prior to the Oshkosh event, right? Exactly, it was planned that way. So <laughs> we have, Kokomo is very unique that we have a permanent aerobatic box and so a lot of the pilots like to come here and practice in our aerobatic box. And so when they come to practice this week before Oshkosh, we just say, hey, could you do us a favor and fly in our show? <laughs> <laughs> well, that works out great for Kokomo. It does. But, so what is there available to do and see at the air show? Okay, at the air show, we are kicking things off at 8 a.m. with a pancake breakfast, and that's being served by the Kokomo Noon Kiwanis. Um, it's $5 in advance, $7 at the door. Proceeds from that go back to the Kiwanis. And then we'll have lots of vendors on site, lemon shakeups, uh, hog heaven, Little Caesars pizza, D&K, kettle corn, lots of people like that. And you can take some rides and some specialty planes. And all of that information is on our website, kokomowingsandwheels.com. And the air show starts at one o'clock. So everything uh, just, just kind of, it's all day. Come and enjoy the day. Okay. And this air show is completely free, free parking, yeah. free to get in, but there's one special thing going on and about a fundraiser. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Well, all the food, like I said, the pancake breakfast goes back to the Kiwanis and then all the vendors, they're giving 15% back to the air show and we'll give a portion of that back to the Kiwanis once we our bills. <laughs> so yeah, it, it is a fundraiser, but we try to keep that on the down low because we just like to promote the air show. And the air show is completely free, but do bring money because there's food available. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And we hope to see you here this Saturday, the 18th at Kokomo Municipal Airport. Kokomo native and Houston Astros pitcher Joe Thatcher threw out the first pitch at the Kokomo Jackrabbits home game against the Hannibal Cavemen on Tuesday, July 14th. We're here at Kokomo Municipal Stadium with Joe Thatcher, who just threw out the ceremonial first pitch. And Joe, you got your start with the Prospect League, yeah. right? You want to tell them a little bit about that just in case <laughs> they don't know? Yeah, it seems like a long time ago, uh, but I, yeah, I played uh, with the Quincy Gyms uh, after my 
sophomore and junior year of college. Um, went over and played there, spent the summer there playing, and uh, had a lot of good times there. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun league. Um, it's the first time that uh, you really get a, a taste of what kind of like pro ball is like playing playing every day. Um, you know, there's no school, there's nothing nothing to take your focus away from the game, and it's it's all baseball. Um, and it's really a, a good chance to uh, you know develop your skills. And uh, I met a, met a lot of good friends on that team that I'm still friends with too. So um, it's exciting. It, it's exciting. I'm glad uh, Kokomo's a part of it now. Right. And after that, you moved on to the Frontier League, and and now you're a part of the American League, yep. correct? Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it all started, you know, similar to like what's going on here at Kokomo Municipal Stadium. How do you feel about the stadium being in your hometown? Yeah, this is cool. Um, when I left for spring training in February, this was uh, not even close to being done. And uh, to come back here now and uh, see the stadium, it's it's beautiful stadium. Um, I know the community is excited to, to have the Jackrabbits here. Um, I know the fan support has been good, the attendance is good. Um, so it's, it's really exciting to see uh, you know, Kokomo is such a good sports town, and they deserve to have uh, a high level of baseball. And I'm glad the Jackrabbits and the city and the mayor, good night, and everybody uh, did what they needed to do and got got everything put together. And uh, it's it's really a really cool thing to uh, come see and come be a part of. Well, thank you very much for being here, and good luck in your career. Thank you very much. For more information on future games, visit KokomoJackrabbits.com. And now, it's time for Now You Know. Kokomo has had many citizens fight for their nation. But did you know that there was one citizen who received the Congressional Medal of Honor? Indiana has only had 74 recipients of the Medal of Honor, and in all of Howard County, only one has been issued, and that was bestowed upon Marion T. Anderson of the United States Army for his extraordinary heroism in action at Nashville, Tennessee during the Civil War. So who was Marion T. Anderson? Anderson was born November 13, 1839 in Decatur County, Indiana. At some point before his 21st birthday, he moved to Kokomo. Anderson was attending the UWC University of Indianapolis, which is now known as Butler University. News had reached Anderson that Fort Sumter was fired upon and war had broken out. Anderson quickly returned to his home in Kokomo and enlisted on April 17, 1861. The company from Kokomo was full, so he went into camp at Indianapolis and entered active service. Anderson was mustered into Company C, 7th Regiment of the Indiana Infantry on April 22nd. The 7th Regiment was the first to leave the state. They made way for Philippi, Virginia, and on June 3rd, charged into the first battle of the war and captured the first Confederate flag. After his three-month service, he was honorably mustered out. He re-enlisted as a private in Company D, 51st Indiana Infantry. He worked his way through the rankings, and after the Battle of Shiloh, he was commissioned second lieutenant of his company and eventually the entire command of the company. His final promotion came in the form of captain. On May 3, 1862, Captain Anderson and his entire command was taken prisoner. He was held at Libby Prison in Richmond, Virginia. Seventy-five of the captured captains were forced to draw lots to determine which of them would be executed. Captain Anderson's lot was not chosen, however, a captain from his regiment was. Anderson was determined to escape from the prison. After 240 days of imprisonment, cutting down a door, bribing a sentinel, and evading eight guards, he and a companion escaped from Libby Prison. He was given a leave of absence, and after it expired, he re-enlisted. He was offered another promotion to lieutenant colonel, but refused because his command was short of officers, and he felt it was his duty to stay with them. Anderson was detailed as second in command of his regiment and led them in the Battle of Nashville. During the first day of the first battle, 
The 51st captured six pieces of artillery. On the second day during that charge, General Post Commander of the Brigade in the advance was shot and believed dead. His men laid down for shelter. The brigade, in advance of the 51st Indiana, also took cover. Captain Anderson, being in charge of his regiment, commanded his 800 men to charge up the hill with bayonets drawn. The regiment rode past the five lines before them and forced the enemy to retreat. During the charge, Anderson was shot through the hip and the spine. His wound was believed to be deadly, and surgeons didn't treat him for 24 hours. Anderson survived his injuries and rejoined command in the spring of 1865. His wounds required him to wear a steel body support to help him walk. Because the Union won that battle, it ended the war in Tennessee. Just 29 years later, on September 1, 1893, Congress presented Captain Marion T. Anderson the Medal of Honor for his conspicuous gallantry at the Battle of Nashville. Captain Anderson died February 7, 1904, and is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. So, in case you didn't know that a citizen of Kokomo once received the Medal of Honor, now you know. Let's take a look at our five-day forecast. Tuesday, partly cloudy in the morning, followed by scattered thunderstorms in the afternoon. High around 85. Tuesday night, scattered thunderstorms in the evening, partly cloudy skies overnight. Low of 63. Wednesday, abundant sunshine, high of 78. Wednesday night, a few clouds from time to time with a low of 58. Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high near 80. Thursday night, partly cloudy skies, low near 64. Friday, partly to mostly cloudy skies with scattered thunderstorms in the morning, high of 86. Friday night, scattered thunderstorms in the evening with mostly clear skies overnight, low of 68. Saturday, isolated thunderstorms in the morning becoming mostly sunny late, high of 87. Saturday night, mainly clear with a low of 67. Thank you for watching News Brief. Be sure to tune in to indianatalks.com for more local news on the hour. For KGUF2 and the City of Kokomo, I'm April Thatcher, and here is your community calendar.